Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're back in Dorset, in a pretty little village of Julish, which is about two miles to the west of Milbourne St Andrew and seven miles northeast of Dorchester. And many people consider it to be the centre of Dorset itself. And we're going to be doing a roughly four mile figure of eight route today, starting and finishing in the village. And we're going to be seeing some quite magnificent downland scenery and some other unusual things along the way. So do join us. Now you can probably tell I'm squinting in the sunshine and filming on a quite glorious early spring day. It's quite cold, you can see we're still pretty well wrapped up, it's about three or four degrees. There was a frost this morning, but it's gone now, and I say the sun's out, perfect weather for walking. Should we go? <laughs> Let's go. Well, I've parked my car just uh, opposite the church. It's a small village, about 110 houses, 250 residents, something like that. And it's uh, located at the bottom of a, a valley of the Devil's Brook. We'll be having a look at that later. Now, for uh, some while back, the main Dorchester to Blandford Road passed through the village. But in 1750, a turnpike road was created by an Act of Parliament to the uh, east of the village. I think that's now the A354. Now I mentioned the church, so just before we start our walk into the countryside, let's have a look at that. Well here it is, the Church of All Saints. Isn't that pretty? With an avenue of yew trees leading up to it. It's a 12th century origins, altered and enlarged in the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries with a major restoration in 1872. The porch was added in the 18th century and it's got a magnificent oak door. Have a look at the tower up there, that was built in the 14th century. Has two stages with a parapet. I believe it's got three bells, the oldest dated in 1620. And just round the back here there's some quite uh, magnificent memorials. And the one I want to point out to one is this one here, there we go, Field Marshal, Right Honourable Sir John Michel, I presume it's Michel, <laughs> uh, of Julish House. Now Julish House isn't far from here, we'll be having a look at that uh, shortly. And he um, commanded the last force to take Peking. Anyway, we're just going to uh, look over the wall here we can see where we're going to be heading in that field over there and there's a lot to see there as well. We're now heading in a sort of southerly direction away from the church. I mentioned I was crossing a field and with some unusual things to look at and sure enough throughout the whole area here there's loads of little hummocks and humps and across this 17 acre site. It's the remains of a, a deserted medieval village long since gone and uh, I believe somewhere to the east there's a, a moat which uh, may well have been the original manor house but I, I did find a map um, which showed drawings of the earthworks so I'll pop that up on, on screen for you to have a look at. And just while we're here, just looking back towards the village, just over the hedge there is the pub, the Oak Pub, over a hundred years old. In fact, an old 1900s map shows it as the, the Royal Oak. And the impressive house next to the church is in fact the Manor Farmhouse built in 1630. But doesn't the church look so pretty there in the, uh, the sunshine? Lovely. Okay, we're going to uh, head in this direction towards 
Julish house. just stopped here near the edge of the field but uh, just show you it's much more obvious those um, earthworks from here if you look at an aerial map of the area it's much much clearer but even at ground level it is quite uh, it is quite obvious I ought to say regular viewers might notice something a little bit different today this actually is our first walk or video walk of 2021 I'm trying a new microphone it's a Rode Wireless Go <laughs> but uh, basically it means that the microphone is attached to me rather than the, the camera so uh, uh, I don't have to be quite so close to the camera all the time it's quite lovely here if I just quickly pan round now the sun is still quite low but uh, you can see those trees in the far background that's up on a hill park hill and that's actually where we'll be uh, our route will be going across there and then just turning around uh, a stream glinting away but we're going to get much closer to that we're now on a public footpath that's actually taking us through the Julish house estate now the building just behind me here that's not Julish house that's just the stable block <laughs> in fact it looks as though the uh, well the chap doing some survey work in front but there's also a farrier behind that wall uh, shoeing the horse but if I pan around this magnificent estate there just behind those trees is Julish house itself we're not going to be able to get much closer to it because it is private it uh, built in 1702 and the whole estate here covers about 296 acres I think it was sold for <laughs> 12 million pounds in 2019 and I was reading that uh, well there was a Roman building here on the site at one time and uh, a black and white mosaic Roman pavement was found in 1740 just to the south of the house now this here by me is the Devil's Brook in full flow it looks it reminds me very much of the Hampshire chalk streams very clear with a gravel bottom and the Devil's Brook itself is about eight miles long it rises near higher Anstey, very near to the source of the River Divilish, which uh, joins the River Stour. So this stream or brook here flows obviously through Julish and it joins the, the River Piddle <laughs> at Athelhampton in the south, which in turn flows all the way to Poole Harbour. just stop for a little breather with the uh, Julish house in the background I want to tell you a story about an elephant and a mouse <laughs> now the hills round here uh, just above Julish were always thought to be completely 100% chalk that was until the 19th century when a, a geologist was poking about and he came across a little mouse hole and he noticed some sand coming out of the, the hole. Now in those days sand was quite a, a commodity and so they started excavating 
and the diggers got to about five foot down and they came across this ancient trench and inside it were the remains or fossilized remains of two elephants that had died there in the ice age. Sorry, am I boring you? <laughs> anyway, um, if you go back tens of thousands of centuries, uh, this whole area would have looked totally different. And there would have been a, a river at a much higher level and that ancient trench was roughly at the uh, level of where the, the river bed was, uh, about a hundred foot high up a hill now. And those elephants must have just got uh, trapped in some, some marshy land and perished. And there they would have lain had it not been for that little mouse. <laughs> The um, elephant remains now, I believe, are held at the um, Dorchester Museum. Right, at the risk of boring my hound anymore, we better get on with the walk. <laughs> right, if you're following this route, <laughs> Julish House is just through the woods there. And uh, looks like there's there the tennis courts, which haven't been used for some time by the looks of things. What a lovely little building with a dovecot outside, on top should I say. Anyway, we are now going to start heading uphill, up the side of Park Hill through this quite exquisite little woodland path. Gosh, just uh, look at all these ferns that are on the uh, right hand side of the bank. I guess because they're north facing they don't get too much sun so this is their perfect uh, environment for them. It's quite, um, quite atmospheric. Now we've got some lovely views through the, the trees obviously not too many leaves on at the moment bit early in the year but uh, a lot of ivy growing up the uh, the trunks there Gosh, look at these black fungi. I think these are called um, King Arthur's cake fungi. You remember the story when he burnt his cake. So these are supposed to look like burnt cakes. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. They like old beech and um, uh, ash. And they take a long time to, to rot, this particular fungi. And they actually get darker as they get older. Wow, looks like a little hotel for snails halfway up the tree, all huddled together, south facing. You'd think that the birds would get them quite easily up there, wouldn't you? But uh, obviously they feel safe there. Oh, we're seeing all sorts of sights this morning. Well, we're now back in the village. We've completed the bottom loop of our figure of eight. And oh, what a beautiful, Easter or spring scene with the daffodils out and the uh, the stream clear flowing underneath the bridge. Okay, well before we head out onto our northern loop, there's a couple of things I want to show you in the village just along here. Well, the first thing I want to show you is this palm tree that's uh, behind me here, standing on its own in a, a field, looking a bit sorry for itself. Well, what's the story behind that? Uh, not far from here at Blandford, there's a well-known brewery run by Hall and Woodhouse. And the history of that started with uh, William Hall. Uh, and the Hall family started a brewery here in the village in 1770. The uh, family then sold the brewery to a chap called William Symes in, uh, I think it was 1843. And he carried on brewing until 1859 when there was a massive fire that destroyed both the brewery and most of the buildings 
in the village. And apparently the, uh, the palm tree here marks a spot of where the brewery once was. It was never actually rebuilt. So that's the story of the palm tree. So I read somewhere. <laughs> now the other thing I want to show you is opposite the palm tree, old parsonage farmhouse, this lovely building here. In fact I came across a lovely painting of it on the internet and there's a story behind this of a ghost. There was a lady called Betsy Kane that uh, lived here once and she unfortunately committed suicide. She hanged herself on the second floor behind a, a door that has since been bricked up. I wonder if that's the door up there that I can see. Maybe there was a wooden staircase to it. Anyway, poor old uh, Betsy, her body was buried in woods between here and uh, uh, Milbourne St Andrew. And apparently <laughs> her ghost can still be seen in these parts. And I believe this corner is still known sometimes as Betsy Kane Corner. We shall move on. Well, we've we'll been making our way northwards out of the village uh, along a track. Now, if you're following this, I know a few people do follow these videos and do the walk later. Uh, at the end of the track, there's a, well, the track carries on up there. Then you've got um, a footpath next to it. But we need to take this bridleway that goes down almost as if it's going back into the valley towards the old mill. Well, here is the aforementioned mill. Isn't that beautiful? I guess this must be the old mill race uh, next to it with the snowdrops and the daffodils. But, uh, they reckon there was a, or has been a mill on this site uh, since the 1300s and a 1902 map still shows it as being a uh, a working flour mill but it may well have ceased working by then obviously it's a private house now well now this is where the walk changes quite dramatically we've uh, been walking through some valleys some woodland and now we've got some quite exquisite downland to enjoy it's going to be an uphill section as well my breath back we've made it to the top of the ridge and wow it was worth it the views from up here are quite stunning it's gone a little bit hazy so hopefully this is coming out okay but uh, the rich spring grass it's almost as if someone's mown it with the stripes there of course the whole area around here is uh, well known for uh, dairy and uh, cattle, it really is quite, quite beautiful. And the birds twittering away, and obviously some form of crop, perhaps wheat I expect, in the field on my right. Oh, definitely, definitely worth the effort uh, to come up here. I think we'll have a little rest and Ah, oh, I haven't got my um, cannon with me, but can you make out in the very far distance on the top of the ridge some deer? One, two, three, four of them. You probably won't be able to see them, but as I, say, I left my uh, cannon zoom at home today, which is a shame. That would have made a lovely picture. Well, we're now heading across the top of the ridge. And we've got some terrific, quite magnificent views looking north and down into a, a valley, a little village of uh, Cheselbourne, I think that's how you pronounce it, and a very pretty little church, Church of St Martin. But we're not going down there, we're heading straight on southwards back down into the village. 
Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We've just got one little footpath to do that's going to take us down back into the, the village. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please give us a thumbs up and a like and do make a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. It costs nothing and hopefully then you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. In fact, the last time I looked, I think we've gone over the 900 subscriber barrier. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. It's a real thrill for us both. We've had a super walk today. Bit of everything really. Woodland, chalkland, valleys and a very pretty little village as well. Sun's been out. A real fresh spring day. A great day to be outside. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.